This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime. Hello and welcome to Startup Wednesday. We are now bang in the middle of board exams. Both 10th and 12th standard students are now running around caught in this whirlpool of textbooks, exam centers and stress. On this episode, we are going to take a look at startups and young companies that are helping students through this period, starting with that stress part, which can often lead to depression, anxiety attacks, even suicide. So, can mental health apps actually help students through this process? Let's take a look. I thought that I would not be able to clear my board exam and I would always cry for that. See, I will fail, I will not clear, what would happen if I would repeat my 12th. That's Ankita, an 18-year-old Delhi-based student currently in the middle of her 12th standard board exams. She adds that preparing for her boards was so stressful, even her parents couldn't fully understand what she was dealing with. Eventually, she started texting a counsellor on a mental health app to talk about her anxiety. And this is an option several CBSE, ICSE and state board students across the country are choosing, e-counsellors observe. By the end of pre-boards, people are more in sync with what, where they lie. So they know that especially you know, people who don't score too well in pre-boards, which most students do. So uh, that's where you know, they come, then they realise they need to come for counselling. And this trend has led to a huge spike on the websites and mobile apps of mental health startups during Feb and March. These days we actually see, given that it's a month of exams, we see a lot of students coming to your those. Uh, especially we've seen like a 5, 500%, 5x jump in the number of people who are coming to your those just related to exam stress. The two-year-old e-counselling startup Yodo says the rise in traffic is not only from students but even parents wondering how they can help their children. In fact, Way Forward, the Delhi-based mental health startup founded last year by psychologist and businessman Duo, claims that about 20% of the 10,000 board exam-related queries per month are from parents. I think a lot of the stress that children experience is you know, from the parents, it's the parents' aspirations and goals and sort of the gaps in communication. Texting tops the list with 70% of students choosing chat-based sessions with phone and video calls coming in second and third. Mental health apps attribute this to the young users being more comfortable with texting as a medium. And while most schools do have a counsellor on campus, students say they prefer the anonymity of these apps. Because as a society, I think the culture that we have grown up in, we all want to have that macho image. We don't want to accept our problems. We do not want to show our vulnerabilities to people because we feel it might get exploited or we'll be thought of that we can't solve our problems ourselves. Apart from stigma, Indian mental health startups also hope to tackle other roadblocks in this space, such as lack of access. There's a huge problem because of stigma. There aren't enough experts out there. And also in terms of the training, there, is, there are big gaps in the market. So there's a massive requirement. A lot of times they are unable to go through with it. Like they'll come in, we'll try to help them, but they're not able to follow up. Again, I think that, that's where sort of the, the maturity in help seeking, that it doesn't exist. With 60% of exam-related counselling queries originating from Tier 1 cities, most of these apps claim 40% come from Tier 2 and Tier 3 city students. Still, most e-counsellors maintain that online counselling is not meant to replace physical therapy, but work hand-in-hand -hand with it. I'm now sitting with three 12 standard students currently in the middle of their board exams, Bhavya, Lavisha and Pooja. And we're going to find out how the board exam period is treating them. So I'll start with you, Bhavya. Uh, can you tell me from the preparation time in Feb when you were doing the preparation, how was the month of Feb for you? It was actually uh, like a time that you have to uh, completely utilize with tests and all sort of uh, preparations actually that you can uh, as much as you can you know consolidate the content that you have done throughout the year. Okay. So that's basically the time to do it all. Okay. And during the month of Feb did you feel any sort of stress? Did you feel pressure? How was that? Yes. 
there was a lot of pressure at that time i feel when the both started and the first exam english i was like it was okay i was familiar with everything <laughs> but before that it was like what will it be like even the seating everything was a bit yeah conspicuous to us okay. yeah. so the whole process you're saying the seating so the yeah. whole the process of finding yes, your center yeah. everything was so conspicuous for us okay how was the change from february where it was preparation and now march where it's actually happening it's just like we just need to we don't have the time to revise the entire syllabus so we just can solve the papers and get our doubts cleared and then yeah we just and just wish to just get over with them as soon as possible <laughs> and so are you feeling the pressure are you feeling stressed are you feeling some anxiety um yeah it happens like a day before the exam we like okay what will happen tomorrow i don't know if i'll remember everything or not will i be able to just come okay. out with the answers on time or whatever so there are lots of things which come in between but then we're okay i mean it gets balanced <laughs> by okay. different things and can you identify where the pressure is coming from is it parents uh, is it teachers is it your fellow classmates is it your seniors where is the pressure coming from no i guess it's within us okay i guess everyone is so supportive from our teachers to our parents to our friends everyone wants us to achieve but it's somewhere we get a bit anxious like what will what will be the future like the colleges as well where will we get into so about our future so it's we who get a bit nervous and we should control it okay and where do you think the pressure is coming from for you um basically all the expectations even from the society from our parents from ourselves as well and you know uh, stuff like um, you know our colleges and especially if you want to get into du the uh, cut offs are so high that the expectations are already up in the sky mm -hmm. and so during the the month of march you deal with your board exams and then are you thinking right now only about the next paper or are you thinking after the board exams end what am, what is my next step what am i going to do is that also playing on your mind yes of course the entrances mm -hmm. as well okay. about the different colleges actually the main aim like Okay the board is there but also where will we get after the board the colleges right. that that's another burden that so it's 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 not just like month of march will end and the stress yeah, will end no, it it's not like that <laughs> uh, yeah i mean uh, you have to always you know apply to colleges different colleges and you have to you have the stress of getting into them you've had the preparation time you've had sessions the whole of last year preparing you for this and now you're in the middle of it and you're telling me that the stress continues up till march till you'll get into a college somewhere so in this entire a process that goes on i think one and a half two years if you could change one thing about it what would you change if you could you know say if if the decision was in your hands and you could say i'm going to change this one thing about this entire process or change the process itself what what would you change um i think the amount of uh, rote learning that goes into everything i think i would like to change that because um we end up rote learning like especially humanities students uh, end up rote learning like 100% of the syllabus and only like 30% of what we you know memorized and spent our whole year memorizing comes into the uh, exam yeah, so okay. that's sort of really disheartening okay what about you mm, i feel kind of same like bhavya there should be a strike like we should strike a balance between practical and theory as well okay. this is in some subjects but i should i feel that there should be in other subjects as well and so this will make it very easy for us so you think right now there's too much theory you would want yes. more practical yes. what about you pooja we have practicals in every subject <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so um Uh, probably the syllabus because like it's not been revised for like quite a few years now and i think the syllabus should be changed for in some subjects we like have three marks for a chapter which no one wants to study like for 50 pages who want, who wants to study for three marks yeah. so that's what the syllabus should be revised okay. i feel Great insights from these three 12th standard students who are currently bang in the middle of their board exams and they say the stress does not end there months of May and June are also going to be high anxiety because that's when the applications for colleges start now on the other side we're going to take a short break and on the other side we're going to see how edtech startups are helping different students during this period don't go anywhere